Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's tell some stories tonight, but let's make sure we add a little bit of a message into it. I'll tell you the story about when I fought two guys over one beer. <laughs> yeah, I fought two dudes over one beer. Let's talk about self-medication in regards to PTSD. And that's the message. A lot of people with PTSD choose to self-medicate with vice, which turns into addiction. They end up pill heads, alcoholics, drug addicts. And it feels like an escape, and maybe it is a temporary escape. And I found myself a major alcoholic. I went through all kinds of drugs, but I liked beer. You know, I did crack for a year every night, used to rob people for it. But beer, alcohol was my thing, beer and wine. I drink a case of beer and a gallon of wine every night, seven, seven nights a week. I used to go to the bars and do a lot of business out of the bar, so I knew the bartenders and bouncers and people. I get into any bar for free. I don't have to wait in line at no place. And the bartenders always giving me free drinks and just tip them. So hanging out at a bar for five hours is not that expensive when you're doing it that way. And I was supporting my habit, no problem major alcoholic and it was all just stemmed from going through a really horrible time I had had PTSD from some trauma and been through a few murders my father got murdered so that was how I was dealing with life and the addiction the substance on the one hand it may have felt like it was an escape Oh, I'm drunk and I'm not thinking about all my problems. And I was kind of a, a, a happy drunk, at least until a point. But the problem was is that over time, the alcohol, I mean, it makes you toxic. It's a poison, literally. So it heightened my fight or flight response. I would get triggered quicker. The more I devolved into alcoholism, the easier I would get triggered emotionally. And I would have a really fast response to where sometimes I could respond with a fight or flight mode, usually with fighting, before I even could control myself. And then I would regret my behavior later. And this kind of thing is common with addiction and particularly when you have an emotional component to it like PTSD. It makes you doubly toxic. So I'm walking around a ticking time bomb like this and drinking heavily, heavily, heavily. I was living in Santa Barbara and my brother moved out to California from DC with his girlfriend. And then they broke up and he was single. So I was like, check it, we're gonna go down to Santa Barbara. It's Halloween. They got a big fucking party just north of Santa Barbara in Isla Vista. That's where UCSB is, University of California Santa Barbara campus is in Isla Vista, Goleta area. And it's a cute little college town. And it's a party town. <laughs> it's known as a party town. But Halloween is the biggest party. It was rated by Rolling Stone magazine or something one year as the biggest party in America like bigger than Mardi Gras or anything. The streets go crazy, every block, the whole town is just wall to wall people. People dressed in crazy costumes and, I mean, it's just insane. Big hedonistic party, people are fucking, and I mean, it's, it's just out of control. You see celebrities down there, lots of money down there. It's a rather safe, wealthy area. So we go down there and party it up. We did get to have a celebrity interaction because lots of celebrities would show up to that thing because it was such a well-known party. But we saw Ice T, and that was funny. We we're sitting in the park. They got a park right downtown Isla Vista, cute little park. And it, it, at the time, at least, it was legal, perfectly legal to drink alcohol in the park. So bums would go down there and drink, and you could take a bottle of whiskey or a, a, a six-pack of beer and go and pound it in the park. Perfectly legal. No one's going to say a thing. Cops won't do a thing. So we're down there with an 18-pack of beer, pounding them. And 
a whole group of dudes, big black guys wearing Raiders jackets, big motherfuckers. Me and my brother are big guys, bigger than average people. These guys are way bigger than us, huge. <laughs> 350 pound giants. And they were kind of walking in a tight group. And to me, since they're all dressed in Raiders jackets and all black, they gotta be a gang. This isn't just people out sightseeing. They're not here for Halloween, that's a gang. We were, at the time, we were running with Southside, Serrano's living in their neighborhood. So we don't know if these guys are Crips or Bloods or who the fuck they are. But they're definitely cruising through this park. So we got our eye on them, trying to figure out what the deal is with them. And they're walking in this tight group and I can see in the middle of the group, these little feet, these little legs in the middle of the group of these big goons. And I caught a glimpse in between them, like in between the two big giant shoulders of these guys, this Jerry Curl little dude. And I stood up and I yelled out, Ice T! These guys all look around with their guns. You know, they, they didn't pull guns out, but they all put their hands in their jackets like they're getting ready to draw from shoulder holsters. <laughs> My brother looked at me like, hey, get a shot. These guys come storming over. And the, the, the group kind of parts and Ice T comes out. He was rather amused by us and shook our hands and we chatted for a minute. I offered him a beer, but he didn't drink. He was like, I don't drink. And it was a, a, a great experience. And then they, they, they carried on. Later that night, we were on our second 18 pack. And we had been just drinking all through town, going to keg parties and drinking, but we're going, we, we always had our own beer because you could drink in the streets and try to keep that buzz going. And I'm standing there holding this 18 pack and we're right in the middle of the street over by the beach and there's concerts in people's front lawns. The Red Hot Chili Peppers had played on a cliff top. Uh, they helicoptered in, played like a couple songs and helicoptered out. We missed that shit. We were on a different block, different part of town, but this is the kind of party it was. And uh, we're standing in this block full of people These two women, my brother was always really good. He's married now, but he was always really successful with women, much more so than me. Women liked him, they liked him. I've had women come up to me and I thought liked me. And I'll be like, hey, and they're like, uh, could you introduce me to your brother? Like, no, fuck you. <laughs> and he was the kind of guy that he would definitely take your girlfriend. I mean, he never, we never competed over women because we have different types. But I've seen him go up to people at a bar and just be like, you better watch her because I'm going to take that girl from you. She'll be sitting on his lap and he'll be like, that'll be my girlfriend by the end of the night. And sure enough, <laughs> there's nothing you can do. So these two beautiful women come walking up to him and start talking to him. And I got this beer. And just as I go to walk over, because I was just a little bit of feet away, to go over and try to join their conversation, because this definitely looks like something I want to be in on. Someone snatched the 18 pack out of my hands. And I look over and it's some dude running that direction with my 18 pack. You can tell it was two dudes. And before I could even think, I mean, rationally, I should have been like, ah, who cares? I came down here to party, I got plenty of money. I don't give a fuck, I'm drunk as shit. Who the hell cares? I'll go buy another one, I don't give a fuck. I'm getting ready to go talk to these beautiful women. No, 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 I wasn't thinking. I, I was just this volatile, wild man. And instantly, I, ch I, I, I go bolting off. My brother didn't even know what happened. He's in the middle of talking to me. In the, within like a flash of a second, I'm gone. And there's a thick crowd around, so it's easy to be lost, to be out of sight within a second. And I chase these guys through the crowd we get through the crowd in, in between two apartment buildings. There's a stairway going up to one and then a ground floor entrance on the other. And all the people are out in the streets. And it's just popping off, going crazy. The one guy, he had the 18 pack. He's in front of me. The other guy was, I mean, they were both spread out, but the one guy was right in front of me. It was right on his ass. He turns around, bam, I got him good. And I had the momentum just running faster at him. And he turned around and stopped. 
And oh, I clocked him. It was just a lucky, really good lucky punch. Flatten this guy. He drops the 18 pack. His homeboy, who's with him, the beer thieves, he comes running at me like from the side. I turn around and I get him. I didn't drop him or flatten him like the other dude, like his friend. But I, I clocked him good, right in his fucking face. Good punch. They both run up into the, up, up the stairs and into the building. And I didn't feel like chasing them in the building. 18 packs sitting on the ground. My knuckles on one hand are uh, swollen because I didn't hit the guy right, like an idiot. So I, yeah, I, mean, I didn't break knuckles, but they're swollen. I pick up the 18 pack. There's only one beer in it. Only one beer left. <laughs> I felt so stupid. I just fought two guys over one beer. And I get back, it took me a minute to get back to where I was and to find my brother, because he was, standing in the middle of the crowd like what the hell happened and he talked to the two women for a, a minute and then they strolled on and he was pissed and he was just like what the hell happened he's like I was setting the whole thing up but I looked over and you're gone and they were like well I guess your friend's not interested and they kind of moseyed on and he was like you blew it man <laughs> moral of the story don't self-medicate if you have PTSD, go get fucking therapy. Thanks for watching.